So thank you for doing this. Of course. Um, we are here with Jofrider, mm -hmm. um, who performs under JFDR, mm -hmm. um, which obviously is an acronym. Some sort of an acronym, yeah. <laughs> um, and she is actually a veteran, as young and beautiful as she is. She's been going to Airwaves since, what was your first year of Airwaves? It was 10 years ago, 2009, mm -hmm. and I was 15. Yeah, she's in, yeah, and she, you were in, Pis <clears throat> I'm probably going to say it wrong, Piscal Panion? Uh, Piscal Panion. Okay, yeah, I was close. Almost, almost right, yeah. And she's also, you've also been in Samaris, in mm -hmm. Gangly, um, am I missing any, I mean. Those were my bands, my projects where I, where I was in a uh, full member, but I've performed with people who are, I guess, from Iceland, from the scene. Yeah. But not like officially, those were, yeah, my official ones. Well, I'm going to start, I'm going to go with the 2010s thing, just because we're on that right now. So we're on the cusp of uh, the 2010s being over. And mm -hmm. since I feel like you, especially since you've sort of grown up with yeah. airwaves, do you have any a favorite moment or two over the, your airwave scene that you could pick from the 2010s that mm -hmm. really just sort of stick with you? I think one of my favorite moments was in 2013 when I played with Samaras in Harpa. Oh my in Silverberg, in the biggest, well, like the big room, not the the, the opera concert hall, but the, the big kind of venue. And we had these amazing costumes. It was like all white and flowy and we had like sparkly makeup on our face, and we just looked like. I so, have I pictures from that. I'm going to send them to you. Yeah, I was it. in the photo pit <clears throat> for that show. It was amazing. It was so much fun. And it just felt like, <clears throat> yeah, it, it felt like we'd really pulled something off that I didn't know we had in ourselves. And yeah, very happy. How about, do you have a favorite, um, from the 2010s, a favorite Icelandic album that you can think of offhand that just kind of you still mm -hmm. listen to yeah. a lot? You probably have a bunch of them, but... Um, uh, Ole Vartnots did one, I think in 2007, called Ve Do Ve. Oh, yeah, one yeah. The, it was her first album, the one with the swans on it. I still listen to that album, even though it's, uh, yeah, 12 years old. Um, well, okay, let's, you had brought up, um, how you looked at, with Samaras and stuff. One of the things I really appreciate about your solo work mm. is that you are aesthetically, the way you do your videos to the way you perform, uh, it's like a certain, I don't know, aesthetic look. It's amazing. Mm. Um, I kind of wanted to ask you how you developed that. You, there's, you wear a lot of white flowy, mm -hmm. so can you talk about that a little bit? Mm. I think, um... Aesthetically, I mean, I'm not, I don't feel like I'm a very visual person. I feel like I'm much really, more... I would dwell. totally disagree with you and then I think you're so... But no, go ahead. I know, I mean, it just kind of comes naturally and I have a lot of amazing people who help me out and I feel like I wouldn't be able to do it without them. Like, the people who dress me, people who help me make all the videos and everything, photos and stuff like that. But, um, I mean, all you can do is just to be yourself and just to try to listen to that voice that says, I like that, I don't like that, and then the rest kind of just has to fall in place. Well, the the new video you have, Take take a Part of Me, mm -hmm. or Taking a Part of Me, um, that has that flowy feel, and you were also in Australia. Yeah. How did that, tell me how that, that came about. I mean, that was, yeah, very strange connection there, but um, I met this amazing producer-engineer called Josh Wilkinson, who was here in Iceland working in the studio, and, um, and I re had a really kind of, strong connection with him instantly even though I didn't like spend much time with him at the time and then we stayed in touch and I, sa I said hey I'd really love to come to Australia and just to spend some time there and hang out because he had he had offered it to me and I kind of thought it'd be funny to just take him up on it because it's so far away and it's so ridiculous but I was spent I was going to be playing in Hong Kong so I figured okay well Australia is not that far away. Yeah. Turns out it is. Yeah. That far away. But it's away. closer than probably <laughs> going from Reykjavik, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It is. <laughs> it's a lot closer than going from here, but still, it was such a long flight. It's crazy. But I went there and I uh, was working with him on the new album and taking part of it as one of the songs. Um, and it's just that was the start of that album, of that process. Um, and then Josh ended up coming to New York and we worked a lot on the album over there. Spent like a, a month working on it together. Um, and then I was very fortunate that the year after I was, no sorry, two years later, I was invited to come and play in Australia, oh. um, in a city outside of, uh, or a, a town outside of Melbourne and then in New Zealand. So I was able to come back to Australia and then the album was finished. So it was kind of like the finishing of that circle. And uh, Josh called up some of his 
friends and one of them was the director, Emily Avila, who um, put together this amazing crew and made the video for taking a part of it. So it was like a, yeah, it was kind of like the full circle. It started and it kind of finished. Did you do any recording while you were in Australia too, or? Okay. Yeah, yeah, so the first trip was um, to work and yeah, just to kind of figure out how it would be to work with Josh and spend time with him and all that. Tell, um, for people who maybe haven't seen the video yet, can you talk a little bit about the concept? It's kind of hard to, I, yeah. yeah. Well, the concept was, um, it's kind of based off this thing that I actually picked up from New York. It was spending time in the parks and having, there was all these amazing groups of Tai Chi, uh, of what do you, practi practice, practitioners or whatever, um, people practicing Tai Chi in the parks. And I guess it was like a Chinese community or, or um, Asian community that were doing this. And we would go there, me and my friend, and, and just sit and look at the view and just uh, have those people there with their kind of amazing slow movements. And then there would be people gambling and there would be like homeless people and there would be all sorts of sort of, you know, everyone from everywhere in the world and any, any uh, path in life. And we kind of, I just remembered that that vision and I was kind of trying to pull things together that that um, stood up from that time when I was making the album and writing the songs. And so that was one. And um, I'd never done Tai Chi, that was the first time I ever did it. But we found this group in Sydney who were, um, who have a, yeah, were very, very open-minded and very interested in, interested in doing this kind of stuff. So they came along, created the, the movements and um, and the rest was more kind of mood. There was like a, a connection with the uh, magnets and magnetism. And yeah. um, I guess also Tai Chi has that very much. It's very much about the energy and like invisible energy. And um, so as much as it is just kind of like a mood music video, it's also kind of subtly hinting at this like invisible energy, like those things that you can't really touch, but you can feel them. And, and magnets is one of them. Like no one really knows how magnets work. Right. It is like a, it's very mysterious in a way, but also it's very, very powerful. And then you have Tai Chi and no one really can kind of properly explain to you what's happening in your body when you do that. But it, people swear by it, have been doing it for thousands of years and it's obviously, obviously there's something in it, you know? Yeah, I was, well, you watch the video, it's, <laughs> there, it's actually very calming. Right, Like, yeah. I, I, I mean, you, you know, it's very, the movements are very, um, articulate or like mm. it, there's you can tell that there's a reason that you're yeah. and that things would flow through you so yeah I recommend to everybody watch this <laughs> video because it, it, it's calming but um I, I feel like it I think the what I got from the song is that it's you know it's breathtaking but it addresses like painful experiences mm -hmm. as well um and letting go of them mm -hmm. so I feel like the video really captures that and I feel like actually your music Mm. to me gives me a lot of that um yeah was that sort of a is that a general theme for you always like the healthful look mm. or you want to go into that a little bit i mean at, at that time and it's nice to hear that that has been translated and actually the lyrics were quite just directly like explaining what was going on inside of me at that time right. but it was sort of um it was sort of yeah usually i would kind of veil it a bit more and be more poetic but at that time i was like done with it i just wanted to write it down and just be like this is what it is but um, it, it was a. I approached songwriting at that time as a way to communicate with someone who was making me feel that way, and also with myself to communicate with myself that like, this is this is just what it is, and you're kind of by writing it, you're almost just like, trying to force it to be true, mm -hmm. and it's so it's so difficult to do that sometimes, but you just had to do it, and it just I don't know, it was um. It just it, it just lands like anyone who writes songs will probably say the same thing. You never really sit down and you're like, okay, to write a song, I first have to do this, and then I have to do this, and then I have to do this. It just it's just a state of mind. It's just a kind of um, uh, a state of mind where you're you you see something, and you're kind of trying to figure out what it is, and and it's a and it, and it's a, a way of projecting things, it's a way of mirroring things, it's a way of healing as well. It's a way of like finding a. Um, a way to kind of get something from here and add into here. Um, I think you the... do that right. for sure. <laughs> that's good to hear, yeah, that it somehow can connect to other people because also that's when it takes life is when it's out of this and it's out into the cosmos and in the world. Do you feel like it? So it's it sounds like you're sort of describing this catharsis that you got. Did you do yeah. this feel? You've written a lot, so d did this feel different? Do you feel like this is sort of the new way you're going to approach songwriting? Or mm, I don't know. I have to actually, 
uh, probably reinvent it because I don't want to continue that way. I don't think so. I mean, if it happens, it happens, obviously. But um, I'm in a very different place in my life and also coming here and being in Iceland is like very, very healing and very good for me. And also, um, yeah, it makes me just kind of like want to, yeah, go, go into diff It's been to try to art articulate it properly. It's been kind of like a, a making that album and that song and everything it was one chapter. And then I've kind of finished that and I've come here. Yeah. And I feel like all the new things are still just sort of, I'm still figuring them out. Are you working on new material since you've been, what, what yeah. we should say, because we talked about this before, <laughs> when did you actually come back to Reykjavik? Uh, we, I came back here last year. Okay. Um, so kind of mid 2018. Um, and yeah, I've been working on new material. I've been doing more music for films and for um, more for just moving images and oh, to cool. kind of accompanying what other people have made. And that's been an interesting challenge. A very different mindset. Also, again, because I feel like I'm not a very visual person. So coming to the, to being the kind of, yeah, getting the, the images and having the images be the kind of the, the leading narrative and then the music has to support or to add another layer and stuff. So um, that's been an interesting challenge for me. See, it's interesting to me because I think of, when I think of your music, I think of the imagery. Right. You know, and that's also again because the videos mm -hmm. ha communicate that. So it's funny. It's it's funny that you would say that that's not how you <laughs> because it comes off that way. Yeah. So when you do the film stuff, is it something that you actually they give you the film so you can look at it and then be inspired by the music, or how does that work? I mean, it depends on the project. And um, I scored a film earlier this year, and then the film was sort of almost finished, and then I just had to kind of accompany that. And um, and follow what the film was was asking for, and yeah, put music into the film that it, it was demanding, and that was sort of really really fun. But also, you just have to think about music in such a different way because usually it comes from the other way around. First, like the feeling kind of exists, and then the music exists, and then the video. But now you're like, okay, I have the video, the story, I have the song, yeah, and the feeling, and then it all kind of flows together in one cyclical kind of motion, and you're sort of you just have to kind of jump into that flow somewhere and it's hard to know cool. where to begin and where to end. That must be fun though. Like to, to make you yeah. exercise a different muscle in your exactly. in your songwriting brain. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's exactly what it is. So um, I, I want to end this with, unless there's a, any questions you might have. Um, I wanted to ask you, so I'd asked you about reflecting back on the 2010s. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to go into the 2020s. What are, oh. what are, what are I know, I know. <laughs> Is that even yeah, real? Yeah, no, no. <laughs> um, what are what are you hoping? I mean, you you've got some new things going. You can't not that you're not from Reykjavik because you are, but you came back home. Mm -hmm. You're working on new projects um, and, and the soundtracks and stuff. What are, what are what is the big sort of accomplishment and hope that you want to bring to the next decade? Oh. I know, big question. <laughs> I just I want to um, release my new album. I want to do that justice. I want to take it to where it wants to go. Um, I want to keep uh, writing new songs. I want to push myself, do something I've not done before. I think I did that with the last album just naturally, but now I also need to figure out how I kind of continue that journey, how I continue that path. Um, and yeah, I don't know, <laughs> I just want to embrace the mystery. I love it. Um, uh, one last question. Um, do you have a projection on when you might have a new album out? So the next album is out in 2020. 20, okay. February or early March. Oh, okay. So um, soon. Yeah, very soon. And then after that, I have no idea. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. At least we know. Do you, we have a name for it already? Yeah. So the, it's called New Dreams. Okay. Um, okay. Great. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for doing this. I appreciate for it. For having me.